always wanted to make music that was nostalgic but also modern and um, while I was living in London I met some really cool artists. I met uh, Lau and Ocelian and Richard X and we started collaborating which resulted in me releasing my debut album Sleepwalking and the rest just fell into place. I guess the inspiration to start my synthwave journey began when I discovered New Retrowave. Yeah, I sent my, my track Rabbit in the Headlights and they liked it and then that was the thing that made me commit to putting music out that would be accepted within that particular genre of music, I guess. I think in 2009 or 2010 I was listening to uh, a lot of uh, French House, Justice, Daft Punk, of course, Sebastian, so a lot of uh, headbanger music. And um, then I heard a song by uh, Kavinsky. I think it was Night Call. I just loved it. I loved the synthwave genre. Then in 2013, I believe, I uh, uh, saw Drive for the first time. And when I saw that movie, I was like, wow, this this music with this kind of images in the movie I was instantly I, I fell in love with it uh, Pet Shop Boys Depeche Mode um, Tears for Fears The Doors Queen Kim Wilde Depeche Mode To be honest I don't really have a, a great musical musical inspiration uh, when I was growing up. 70s, 80s synth music like Tangent Dream and Kraftwerk, uh, also rock and roll music, 50s, 60s pop rock, so quite a lot. I mean, the, the music that I was really interested in was 80s music, um, and I also loved um, 70s music, kind of prog rock bands like. Pink Floyd. This one cassette I remember that we used to play in the car when we went on, uh, on vacations to France. It had uh, a Ghostbusters on it, uh, Rick Ashley with Never Gonna Give You Up. When I start about writing a new track, I guess the, what I'm looking for is I'm trying to create a mood. Um, and from that mood, I find I'm kind of pulled towards um, like certain chord progression, maybe, or a melody. Maybe the melody is first, and it's a little repeating melody thing, and then I'll play chords over the top. Well, it's it's always different how I uh, how I start a new track. Sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's a bass line or uh, a melody that I have in my head. Uh, that I put into uh, into my DAW, which is FL Studio, and um, from there I just start building uh, a, a chorus because I always begin with the uh, the middle part of the song, the chorus, and from there I start working on uh, on the track. I usually work with producers. Um, sometimes we we get inspired by a lyric I wrote or. Um, dreams we've had, or experiences, or a scene from a movie, all that can be very inspiring. When I work with uh, uh, with vocalists, I always send them my, uh, my music first. I always give them total freedom because I always see it as a uh, true collaboration. It's 50-50 work. I, I let them write the lyrics and uh, let them record uh, the, the vocals. When you're starting a track, you're trying to create a mood, but when you're writing a song, you then have to sort of uh, develop that mood into a structure. Taking this initial mood on a sort of up and down journey, which is, you know, the down part is the verse, you're coming up to the chorus, you're coming back down, you're sort of dynamically taking the listener on a journey. I don't really have a specific method, but um, it's usually a very intuitive and organic process. Sometimes I start with the lyrics and they turn into a song or the producer sends me a track um, to start with and then we'll just go from there. Lexicon and Valhalla. Definitely native instruments ROM. Um, I think that reverb is uh, the most musical sounding reverb. It's, it's nothing like any of my other reverb. I find myself going back to it again and again. Software 
event type black hole, hardware, specular templates. Well, samples from Mars are fantastic for all of your classic drum machine sounds. You just you can't go wrong there, and they've they've actually sampled those sounds and process them through old samplers and stuff like that. Uh, Simmons SDS series. Cork Poly 6 software, Moog Voyager hardware. So I use Silenth, I love that for bass. I love Spire. Omnisphere I found myself using. OBX, Korg Mini Lock, and MS Mini for uh, synth leads, pads, and bass. Um, Arturia and Diva are great too. I love how they um, recreate old analog gear. My favorite is probably um, being creative with sounds and um, exploring sounds as well. Just creating new ideas, just getting uh, uh, a bass line or a melody going and start working from there just to jam along to it. Without a doubt the, the, the creation, that initial spark when you, you know you're playing around with sounds and finding a mood and then something clicks and you you just that's it the spark of an idea comes to you and you run with it and it's you know you you get annoyed when you need to go to the bathroom because you're like no i i i don't want to go to the bathroom i'm i don't care if i'm hungry i need to get this idea down now. Generally the writing process, also when I'm collaborating with other artists, um, bringing different ideas together and just joining forces is always so exciting and you learn so much from one another. Uh, my least favorite part of the production process is uh, the arrangement because every time I want to be innovative or I want to do something new it's going to be like any song ever made. It has an introduction, it has a verse one, it has a chorus, verse two, maybe verse three, then the chorus, uh, uh, then another verse and the outro, and that's going to be it. Near the end, at that end stage where my ears are saturated and I need to get someone else in to come and listen to keep the objectivity because by that point, um, I can no longer hear the track. What I also don't like is if you have a great idea and <laughs> you don't record it right away and then you lose it. And it happens to me all the time because for me, I don't know, great ideas come and they go within seconds. So it's very frustrating, um, but um, you learn, you live and learn. And, um, and now I try to record everything right away. There's no such thing as a wasted idea. All uh, ideas that you come up with lead you to some sort of conclusion. Don't underestimate the power of, um, you know, the demos that don't work out because those demos, the reason why they don't work is because you went in a direction that wasn't right for you. Um, they make you realize what's not you. There's no such thing as a bad demo because they all lead you in a direction. Find a manager who you can trust and who has your best interests at heart. Um, someone who doesn't have their own agenda. There were many times when I walked down a path that just wasn't right for me and I didn't trust my instincts and I wish I had done that more. I wish I knew uh, I had to cut my bases uh, when I started out. And uh, with that, I mean, I have to cut my bases below 20 or 30 hertz and uh, even make them mono below 50, at least that's what I do, uh, below 50 hertz. Um, that makes it so much tighter and uh, makes it sound so much better on bigger systems. Carnival Night I wrote with Radio Wolf and we wanted to be a little bit more daring and um, also push me vocally. Um, I um, played a little bit with um, my vocals, which were a little bit on one hand um, romantic, but then also deadpan. Um, it was kind of what I was feeling like at the time of my life. Uh, it was pretty much like a roller coaster, so it was a perfect song to do that at that time. And um, we also played um, with a combination of um, teaching synths and guitars and lots of reverb effects and uh, oversaturated vocals just to kind of um, make you feel like you're on a 
I don't know, a wild ride. <laughs> So um, it was really fun to um, work on the song, create it with him. Uh, when I was working on uh, my album Night Drive in 2018, or in 2017, it was released in 2018, um, I had uh, uh, a, few, a few songs done and uh, I felt it really needed another uh, vocal song. So uh, I started working on a song and came up with the, the uh, arpeggiator melody of, uh, of Back To You and um, turn it into a song really quick. And then uh, I heard um, the, the Bad Dreamers on uh, on New Retro Wave's YouTube channel. And yeah, he wrote the lyrics of Back To You, which is like a really dark uh, uh, theme with uh, somebody who broke up and he just wants his girlfriend back. But uh, yeah, she, she doesn't want him back and he has to live with that. That's the idea of the track. So um, yeah, he recorded the vocals and uh, sent it to me. We made some uh, uh, changes to the arrangement. And uh, yeah, that's how the song was born. That's a good question, I don't know. I, th um, I use so many things. I think probably the secret weapon is me because like, I'm the one that's using them. So I would like to think that um, for anyone listening to that that you you know the, you're a producer you're the secret weapon because you're the one that gives life to all of these plugins synthesizers if you're using hardware then you know you're the one that that makes like music happen through these tools so um you know i don't know if that answer sounds a little bit too much like a hallmark greetings card <laughs> you're the secret weapon I mean, I trust my inner voice and let the music guide me and um, I get lost in my own secret dreams and memories. Yeah, I, uh, I do have a, a secret studio weapon. Well, not really secret because I've shared it with you in my uh, Sonic Academy uh, tutorial, of course. But um, yeah, it's a, 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 a template that I use on all of my synthwave tracks. It's a, a combination of a, a multiband compressor which boosts the, the, the lows a little bit, a uh, stereo enhancer, which widens the, 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 the sound, and a uh, parametric EQ, which boosts the middles a little bit, and uh, uh, that's it. It's important to push yourself, and um, you will get there. Um, you know, sometimes you just, maybe just take breaks, it's fine. Do something else. You know, and then come back to it later. But um, if you push yourself, you, you will get there and um, try to recreate that original feeling, which is always magic. Yeah, like I said before, uh, I'm struggling with uh, completing my tracks as well. Uh, in the arrangement process, I always get stuck. But um, yeah, you should not forget that uh, most songs or most pop songs have the same structure. So it's uh, an introduction, a verse one, uh, a chorus, first two, maybe first three, another chorus, uh, first three or four, and then an outro. And uh, once you follow that structure, uh, you're good. I've definitely struggled in the past with, um, you know, I think the cliche is, you know, you, you get a sort of idea going, but you're stuck within like a 16 bar loop and you're not quite sure if it's a verse, is it a chorus, if it's an instrumental piece that you're working on. Is this an A section, is this a B section, what am I going to do with this? And then how do I develop and get this, you know, out of 16 bars into a four minute epic? <laughs> Just listen to a lot of music that you love, that you think have great arrangements and just put them into your DAW. Drop that track into your your digital audio workstation if you work in Ableton like me or Logic or you know whatever you use. Make uh, notes in the DAW, okay this is first one, this is first two and blah 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 and just copy the structure with your own song. Uh, I hope I uh, could give you some insight into uh, my, uh, my Time Cop 1983 world and uh, how I work and uh, I hope to see you again someday. See ya. Thank you to Sonic Academy and Michael Oakley. Thanks for having me.